Hello, is this 23 and me? Yeah, you can go ahead and cancel my order. No, no, I don't want to know anymore. All right, welcome to Tate's Takes. If you're new here, I give spoiler-free movie and TV reviews. Give you a little background, just let you know if I think it's worth checking out or not. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular taste takers, let's see how crazy this Our Father doc is. Get it? I said doc, like documentary, and it's about a crazy doc. Nah, I don't even care, that one was good, because it doubled up the wordplay. Our Father doc, the doctor is the- Okay, Ugh. Never mind. Quick background here. Our Father is a new Netflix documentary that comes to us by way of Blumhouse Productions, which may sound like a surprise to some of you guys because they're known for producing horror films. But after hearing this story, I can't think of anything more creepy. It was directed by Lucy Jordan, and this is her directorial debut, but she's not out of her league. She used to work on shows like TLC's Taken at Birth and MSNBC's Sex Slaves, Texas Rescue. Sex Slaves, Texas Rescue? What show is that? Anyway, the point is, she's definitely down to get some justice. All right. Plot time. And I guess I should do a warning. What you're about to hear is pretty freaking disgusting. Viewer discretion is advised. I mean, it really is. I, it sounds funny, but just know that I warned you. Anyway, our father tells the story of this dude named Donald Klein. He was a fertility doctor in Indiana. He opened up his clinic back in like 1979. Of course, back then, what we know about fertility science is nothing like what we know today. And back then, he was like the best in the business. He had a much higher success rate than some of the other doctors in his field. So if you were having trouble having kids, you will pull up on Dr. Klein and he will get you going. All right, let me try to break this down. From my understanding, there's kind of like two ways to have a baby this way. Let's use two made up people for these examples. And for the sake of the exercise, we'll call them Kimberly and Kanye. Okay, example one, Kim and Kanye want to have kids. They find out that Kanye is infertile. Dr. Klein goes, okay, no problem. What is your husband? Like 5'8", brown hair, brown eyes, makes fire beats. Let me check my Rolodex. All right, we found one here. Example two, Kim and Kanye are having a hard time getting pregnant. They pull up at Dr. Klein, but Kanye's not infertile. They're just having a hard time. So Dr. Klein's like, okay, Kanye, take this cup. You know what to do. Kim, when he's finished, I'll use this to get you going. And in both of those examples, Dr. Klein would just say fuck it and use his own sperm. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way. What the hell? And it wasn't even like he had a collection of his own stored sperm. He would have these women in his office, tell them, BRB, let me go get this donation. And he would just, you know, like whip up his own. He would do what, you know, because what he told Kanye to do, but he would just do it himself. Then he would just use that instead of Kanye's, but he just told you. So what, where did Kanye's go? One of the reasons why this is such horrific an experience is it's not just that he used his own sperm on our mothers, is that he was known for using fresh specimens on his patients. That's why he had such a successful business mm -hmm. in practice is because he didn't use frozen specimens. Mm -hmm. He used fresh. And did he tell these women, hey, if I just use some of my own fresh sample, the success rate will be much higher than if we use someone else. Would you be interested in that? Of course not. He just inseminated them and sent them on their way. And no one had any idea that any of this was going on until one day an only child named Jacoba Ballard got one of those at-home DNA tests and found out that she had seven half-siblings. That's suspicious. Now she knew she was conceived by a donor but the same donor sperm isn't supposed to be used more than like three times. Naturally, she goes on a mission to find these siblings and try to get justice for their moms whose rights have been extremely violated by a doctor that they trusted. And now we got a documentary. So what's my take? This is one of the craziest Netflix documentaries ever made. Now, of course, Netflix has a lot of true crime docs and there's nothing that can compete with a crazy doc about taking a life. But a crazy doc about making a life? This Our Father is crazier than a lot of those Netflix documentaries. Like Tinder Swindler, cool. A little catfish here, a little bank fraud there. All right, Fire Festival, a little Ja Rule here, some weak sandwiches there, all right. Tiger King, well, that might be a good matchup. 
anyway, yeah, Our Father is such a wild story. You really can't believe it's true when you're watching it. And then you're probably like, damn, this dude probably fled the country when they exposed him, so he have to go to jail. But no, there's a whole another part of the documentary that shows just how hard it is for these kids to try to find a court that could find this guy guilty of a sexual crime. He's just chilling at home like right now, just at the crib, watching Netflix. The irony. Because believe it or not, there was nothing illegal about what he was doing. And they found out that he wasn't the only doctor doing this. I don't deny that it was a sexual violation, but legally, there's just no crime that touches this particular act. It's not all bad news though. Because of the work these children are doing, fertility fraud laws are popping up all over the country, but it's not mainstream yet. All right, you see this map? See, the yellow states here are the only ones where fertility fraud laws are in place. And the pink ones, that's just where it's being considered right now. It's not a lot, but it's better than nothing. So what is it that compels someone to do this? Is it a sexual fetish? Is it a God complex? Well, the documentary touches on both of those because maybe it is. For one, there's something to be said about having a woman in your office in those little doctor chairs, feet in those little stirrups, fully exposed, and you step aside to, you know, do your whatever, and then use your whatever like 10 minutes later in her, like, it's all gross. And in the case of Dr. Klein, He's actually an elder in the church. So when they approached him about his wrongdoings, he kept quoting scripture, like how nothing happens without God's will and this and that. The documentary also points out that he was a believer in the quiverful position. And what the hell is that even? Basically, long story short, it's a Christian belief that sees large families as a blessing. Look man, one of these days, people are gonna have to stop using religion to try to justify their actions. Or maybe, it will never stop. Back to the documentary though, it does a real good job using some of the actual kids telling their experience and they have a lot of like audio and video footage of Mr. Klein. They film it in a way that's kind of like a regular documentary where they're like talking heads, explaining what's happening, but they also mix it in with dramatizations and they use some of the actual children of Dr. Klein in the dramatizations. Like you know when you're at work and they make you watch those training videos about like sexual harassment and stuff and the acting is terrible, it's like that but like some of the actors are actors and some of the actors are the real people. And it's kind of hard to tell sometimes who's who. Shout out to Nicole and I, that was a good call out. Besides that, it doesn't drag on, it's definitely not boring, and I think it's gonna do what it's setting out to do, which is basically shame this man in the court of public opinion, because the court of the law kind of doesn't care. I'm gonna give Our Father four stars. I think this is gonna be another number one hit for Netflix, while at the same time, having everyone who's been to a fertility doctor in the last like 40 years really scratching their heads. Like, can you imagine realizing that you might have to get your kid DNA tested because you watched a Netflix documentary? That's too much pressure. About one in eight couples in America experience fertility hurdles and 33% of Americans have looked for fertility help or at least they know someone that has. But I will bet that 99.9997% of them never thought that a doctor could or would do something like this. As if these couples needed something else to worry about. Whether it was illegal or not, whether it was common practice or not, doctors all take an oath to be transparent with their patients and do what's in their best interest. Women just go through a lot out here, it's insane. Like, can you imagine what kind of hell men would raise if it was the other way around? Like, that map I showed you earlier, that whole thing would be yellow. The whole planet would be yellow. Of course, the mother of the child is the real victim here. One of them in the documentary even described it as being raped over and over. Yeesh. But we can't ignore what this does to the kids. Like, growing up thinking you know your dad and it's not your dad. Like, not knowing what kind of medical history your actual dad has. You can't even fill out the little clipboard thing at the doctor's office. And let's not ignore the elephant in the room, people. Because in the beginning of the video, I told you that Jacoba discovered that she had seven half siblings. Since this investigation, it's been proven that Dr. Klein has done this over 50 times. And that's just the ones that we know about. And they're all in Indiana, just roaming around town. What happens when they start dating? Or smooching? Or hooking up? It's too much. There's countless angles to this story that are just so interesting. All right, here's the last one. There's a pair of twins that are two of Dr. Klein's creations. And their whole life, everyone's been telling them they don't look that much alike. They don't look that much alike. No problem. One of those twins finds out about this whole scandal and he's looking up for all his new half-siblings and all this stuff. He finds a brother 
that looks more like his twin than his actual twin. What? The whole thing is wild. And I don't know if 23andMe sales are going to go through the roof with people looking for answers or completely tank because no one wants to hear that possibly horrifying truth. All I'm saying is one of the craziest Netflix documentaries to date. I guess they've seen the news and stocks is dropping, subscribers is falling off, people canceling. They're like, look, drop Our Father. I'm just kidding. Our Father comes exclusively to Netflix next Wednesday, May 11th. Check it out. As always, thanks for checking out Taste Take. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button in the comments. Bruh. Let me know if you plan on checking this out. If you do watch this, what do you think? What would you do? Like, there's some kids that they've looked up and they were like, I don't care about this story. Some people want him to go to jail, you know, get killed. Like, what would you do? Some of the mothers feel like, look, it was a blessing. Like, I, I couldn't have kids. I'm cool with this. Some of them are like, no, this guy raped me. Like, it, it's interesting that it's actually polarizing. It's a lot, man. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.